Hello. It's time to do another I Ching video. And today we're taking a look at hexagram number, from the magician's I Ching here, hexagram number 15, which is humility. Hexagram 15, Qian, um, is the hexagram for humility, and it is represented by the trigrams of earth and of the world. Earth, or sometimes called mountain, is below, and the world is above. So. This hexagram is called humility for a couple of important reasons. So first of all, you have the earth element, the mountain. It's the only one that has a solid yang line. Everything else in the hexagram are yin lines. And the mountain is below the world. Now, the world is representative of a kind of a flat plane. The earth element is stone, it's rock, it's it's a it's a solid structure within the world. So it's it's like often represented by the mountain. But here the mountain is in the is is within the plane. So imagine all of the, the broken lines as being this vast plane in the middle of the plane, or close to the middle, there's this big mountain in it. In fact, that's what the image describes, right? A valley with a tall mountain. And so it says there's too much of in one place and not enough in any of the other places. And this is a hexagram that's primarily um, dedicated to talking about virtue and the importance of virtue. So in particular, the virtue of, of course, humility. In hexagram number 15, the main text of the hexagram says, Humility brings success. The superior individual acts with humility and thus takes things from beginning to end. So in, in you're going to see that as a whole for a, a hexagram that talks about being humble, there's a lot of very auspicious parts to this hexagram. Getting this hexagram is usually a pretty good thing on the condition that you can be humble about it, right? So in particular, I know that we've talked before about the, the uh, significance of where the lines are, right? And the divider is between the lower and the upper lines, right? The lower trigram and the upper trigram. Here, the dominant line is obviously the third line. Usually anytime you have a hexagram where there's only one line, one single line of one type, that's the dominant line. That's the central uh, or, or main line. And in this case, it's line three. Line three is in a pretty humble position. It's in the lower part of the, of the hexagram. It's not even on the on the top part, right? So it represents a position of someone with great power or great wealth or great ability or what have you um, that find themselves in a relatively modest place in terms of the hierarchy of the space around them, which is why humility is necessary. Because the temptation inherent in what this image represents is, is of the opposite. It's, it's, a, it's a being... Um, making a point of not being humble, of using your power or showing off or, or um, being ostentatious or trying to push around everybody around you. And that's what you have to watch out for. The, the great work, the instruction for the superior individual says, the superior individual weighs and balances things equitably, apportioning from the large to the small. And Confucian commentary says, Change tends to diminish the full and augment the humble, or help to maintain it. Human nature loathes the high, but loves the humble. So no one can upend the humble. And this is a kind of a universal truth when you think about it, right? There's nothing that people like more than to bring down someone who's, who's big, right? Whether they're a politician, a rock star, a millionaire, or whatever, right? Um, pe regular people... Will, will really love the, the notion of seeing someone who is a bigwig fall, 
right? So if you are behaving in a way that doesn't show a sincerity of character, a humility about your status or your position, then you're in for a lot of trouble. And this is something that the I Ching was talking about 3,000 years ago. That tells you that uh, it's been a real universal truth for a very long time. The line messages, starting at the very bottom, in line one, it says, the superior individual with humility and discipline will ford the great river. Good luck. So line one, the bottom line, the lowest position on the totem pole as it is, is in a fairly weak position. And it's going to take a lot of work. They're going to have to cross the great river, so to say, to get themselves where they want to go. If you get line one as your augury, it means that there's, there's a lot of effort. But um, you're in a fortunate situation, in part because there isn't anything immediately in front of you. Like the next line is not a strong line. It's also a, a soft line. So there's, there's an opportunity there if you are both humble and disciplined. The second line, which is usually the center of the lower trigram, but this time it's usurped by the powerful third line, um, is in a very humble situation, but it's in a good place to be humble. And so it says, humility is heard in others' hearts. Right pushing brings good luck. So again, as long as you don't express defiance to somebody who is above you that has um, a stronger position to you, as you uh, show ex appropriate humility to what's around you, then you're still going to have good luck because it's all about whether you end up opposing this solid line in the third spot or um, being appropriately humble before that, that, that line. The third line is the central line. It's the, it's the line of power in the, in the reading. It's the, the ruling line. And it says, the superior individual is hardworking and humble, bears fruits in his efforts, and remains humble even at the end. Good luck. The third line is, is, in a, is very powerful because it's a solid line, but it's not in any special position. It's not in the second line. It's not in the fifth line, which are usually the powerful positions in a, in a hexagram. So it's very important to show hard work and humility. There's a bit of an element here of, of feeling if, that the third line is like somebody who's in a place where they know that they're either the most capable person or the smartest person or the person with the best resources or the person with the best... Uh, general ability in the room. They know that. And, and it would be very tempting to try to do something that played on that, right? To, to, to use that in a, in a power play or something in, along those lines. But here, what you're very clearly being told is that if you tap in instead to your humility and act um, generous without being ostentatious, act hardworking, and uh, just focus on doing your work, then you don't need to do anything showy or any kind of a power play to get ahead. The, situ the road is clear before you, right? There's nothing, there's nothing in number three's way here, which is very important because usually if you're in the third place, you're trying to shift up into the, into the, um, the higher ranks, so to say. And here that way is possible for you because the higher ranks aren't populated by anybody powerful. But if you do it in a sloppy way, if you're pushy, then that's not good. All you need to do is remain humble. The fourth line says, auspiciousness to those whose humility is nurtured and sincerely displayed. So here in the fourth line, you have someone who's, again, in a, in a position um, of relative weakness, but it's a, it's a good place to show that, that humility before your superior, the king line in, in line five, right? Um, and if you, if you show... Uh, your humility sincerely, you're not, you know, it's not about being a toady, it's about being generally, genuinely humble in the situation, then everything will be all right. The fifth line is the ruler line, right? It's the line that in, in the context, the tradition of the I Ching represents the king. And here you have a king that is a weak king. He's in a weak position. It's a broken line and it's not, it doesn't have any strong lines around it. It's usually something that you would think would be a bad situation. But the advice given here is very interesting. It says, be modest and charitable about your wealth. Thus looked upon favorably by neighbors, they will unite to your cause and attack outlaws. Everything in the expedition will go in your favor. So that the imagery here, the story, is of a king who is in an unstable position, right? And they're, 
they're being threatened by outlaws, right? By, by a, whether those outlaws are opponents or rivals or what have you. But the point is that there's, there's danger for this king because they're weak. And when you're in this situation, there's, there's not much that you can do if you try to go your own way to do things alone or to try to push people around. So instead, you have to be modest and be charitable and have your neighbors see you as someone that they will want to help. So when you're in this kind of a weak position, here you're kind of forced to be humble. Right? It's necessary to act in a, in a sincere and benign way in order to get the kind of coalition that you are going to need, the support that you're going to need to deal with your problems, because otherwise you'll be in trouble. But if you do this, if, you, if, you're, if you're good to the people around you, then they're going to be good to you. They're going to, they're going to unite to your cause, and the expedition that you undertake will be positive. Then finally, we get to the, the top line, and the sixth line is usually meant to be like the end of the situation when, when the resource or the, the force being represented by the hexagram becomes exhausted. This is a very interesting line. It's one of my kind of one of many of my favorite lines in the I Ching. It says, Your fame of humility is known far and wide. <laughs> the call comes to command the armies, marching now to pacify neighboring countries for the king and the good. So this is um, an example, I think. One of the things people, a lot of people in the West don't know is that the Chinese are actually a very humorous people. They, they love jokes. It's a very big part of their culture. They love plays of words. They love irony. They love all those sorts of things. And I think this is a 3,000-year-old example of that, right? This is a, a case of um, the, the I Ching being a little bit um, roguish in the way it's teaching this lesson, right? It's saying, your fame of humility is known far and wide, right? So it's suggesting sort of like, you're so humble that you're famous for being humble, right? And the situation is of somebody who is, you know, the, the sixth line is the, the sage, the old man, the person is retired. So you can imagine somebody who is, who is so well known for being so wonderfully humble that the king demands that he goes to command the armies, which is not really what they wanted, right? Your humility works against you and you're called on for um, obligatory duties because of that fame that you have and it's duties that maybe you didn't really want. Um, so you, but now you have to go and do it because you have to show, because maybe you were too lofty in your humility and um, you weren't careful enough to uh, kind of disguise some of that or to, to not um, to not let the fame of your humility spread far and wide. So it's a case of some maybe uh, your your traits working against you and bringing an end in a sense to humility. If you're so humble that you're famous for it, you're not really humble anymore. Right? So this is where it, it turns into a different situation. So that's it for, for this video. As usual, um, students of the Yifa Society will, will be receiving another video with some of the more deeper significations of the hexagram. Um, be sure to check out all the other uh, videos on the I Ching playlist if this is the first one you've somehow stumbled upon. And um, if you're interested, subscribe and check out the rest of the channel and the different playlists that are on the channel. If you want to learn more about the I Ching, besides the material that you're going to find in the Magician's I Ching, you should also consider taking a look at the Yi Fa Society. And if you want to learn more first, check out in the description below, there's a link to the, to the newsletter, which comes out usually bi-monthly, more or less. Um, that is to say, once every two months. Sorry, not twice a month. <laughs> that it's a, it's a free newsletter that goes to your email. You subscribe to it, and it'll send you updates of all the videos and different teachings and, and information and stuff that, that I put out. It's still completely free. And when you sign up in your confirmation email that you will get from signing up, you will find there a link to The Path and the Power, which in a way is a sister volume to The Magician's I Ching. The Path and the Power is a translation and commentary on the Tao Te Ching, and you'll be able to get it free on PDF when you sign up. If you're looking for a more detailed and structured system of training in not just the I Ching, but in um, a whole school of spiritual cultivation focused on the I Ching, on meditation and Qigong, 
then take a look at the IFA Society and uh, consider applying for membership. Uh, be sure, of course, to, to like this video if you liked it, and feel free to share it anywhere you like. Thank you.